Has dealing with COVID been the most difficult stretch for you in your entire film career? Dealing with COVID has not been an issue other than things got shut down. I had a film that was uh, ready to go, that was greenlit. We were gonna be shooting the June after the March start of COVID. So that was disappointing. I've never had a green light on a film and watched it completely go away. That was kind of heartbreaking. I felt bad for the cast. I felt bad for the crew. Um, I am never bored. I always find something to do. And we've been very, very productive during COVID. I think between two writers and I, we've created over 30 projects, three writers and I, we've created over 30 projects, six screenplays. Uh, I got involved with a, a health and wellness documentary I've been helping kind of oversee for Pure Flix. That's been fun. Um, but I, as I told you earlier, I just got to the point where I said, it's time to go back to work and you know, people are working. There's a way to do this. And I have a lot of friends who have gotten back on set and they're working. I've got partners up in Canada right now shooting a film for Hallmark. Got other friends that are here in town shooting, you know, at Siren, they're doing the, the Will Ferrell and Julian Moore film and they're back to work. So we're chomping at the bit. So I'm, I'm just more restless now, ready to go. What do you see as the new normal post COVID? Whether, whether a vaccine is found, whether people want to take the vaccine, it's still around. People are still being cautious. God, if you're going to go two years on this interview, Strand, then you're going to prove me wrong. <laughs> what do I think the new normal is? I think, I think the independent filmmaker is going to thrive. I think those who wear many hats and know how to make films on a dime are going to thrive because I wouldn't feel comfortable taking my normal investor's investment now. I, I am working with my investors at a fraction, at one fifth of their normal investment, strictly because I don't want to be shut down during another pandemic. I don't want to risk hurting a large crew, getting people sick. I mean, you, like everybody else, we're talking about a, a, a story with maybe two actors here and two here, and maybe their storylines will intersect, maybe they won't. And knock this thing out in a short amount of time with a crew of six or eight. I think we'll generally get back. I think we'll get I think we'll get to a point where people are gonna get very complacent. Um, I, I compare it to, you know, we did a film in the Everglades years ago with Emmett and Furla um, in the Everglades and there's alligators all around. And your first day on set, you're paranoid to move. You're looking and there's eight to 12 foot alligators everywhere you look. And then about by day three, you stop being paranoid and you get a little more comfortable. And then by day four or five, you're throwing a football with somebody and then the guy's like, dude, you need to step forward about three feet. You got an eight foot alligator like literally right behind you. And I think that's how this is gonna become. I think eventually, I, I don't see a, a vaccine coming anytime soon. It's just not the way it works. Um, and if they shipped it from overseas, I wouldn't take it. So I think I don't stand alone in that stance. I think we're happy to wear masks and PPE and let's get the story told. Um, safety first, but it's that way anyway. You know, you're not gonna put people in dangerous situations. So you figure out a way to stay socially distant and responsible. I think if a crew can quarantine together, then they can work together. It's working and, you know, it worked with football until they all went home. It's worked with basketball. I think there's no reason we can't do that with making our films. I think the new normal post COVID while we have it is going to be smaller crews, shorter dates of shooting, uh, and, and just, you know, figuring it out, you know, figuring it out. Shane, what protocols are you going to take for your upcoming film in this COVID reopening? Well, I mean, you first and foremost, you have to quarantine everybody out 14 days, which is important. I think everybody needs to know that they're clean. Uh, going in, you have to uh, test three times a week anybody who's acting and anybody who's in zone A. Zone A is considered the director of the DP, hair and makeup department, anybody who's coming in regular contact with the actors. Um, and then anybody in zone B would be tested once a week. But when you have a smaller crew, they assume everybody's in zone A. So everybody gets tested three times a week. So we'll test three times a week. I am gonna take temperatures at least twice a day. I'd like taking temperatures every morning and then every day after lunch, unless we had something spicy for lunch, we'll do it before lunch. Um, and we're just gonna kind of stay tight and be a traveling circus and just keep it intimate and tight, not let any outsiders in, not let anybody from the inside go out. It's like, hey, if you're committing and you're in, you're in. And if you're not, that's cool, we can't, we can't do this. Obviously, everybody's gonna to have to wear PPE. Masks are gonna be mandatory. Actors will have to wear masks until we say, let's roll action. 
Um, actors are going to have to be comfortable doing their own hair and makeup, even though we'll have somebody that handles props, hair, and makeup, and wardrobe. I can't have them hovering. So I, I want actors to come camera ready and they can be touched up. And we're not doing a project that's elaborate. We're not doing Moulin Rouge. Um, uh, wardrobe is going to be owned by the cast. We're going to use our own wardrobe. We're going to keep it minimal changes. We're going to use locations that we control. We're not interested in using these locations that are used by the general public or rented or chartered for the day. They're going to be, okay, we're going to his house. We're shooting at his house today. He's been quarantining there for two weeks. We're going outside to this ranch. We're going outside to this wash. We're, we're going to do stuff outside. We have very minimal inside. The, actually, the only interior scenes that we have is an office that has been closed for months that a friend of mine owns that he's given us and um, a cabin out in the mountains that has been vacated now for going on a year. So um, we know it's clean. And that's it. That's everything else is exterior or in a car. And when you say no one's going out, so how do you how do you ensure that the cast and crew? I mean, I realize they're going to have very little downtime, but somebody could sneak down to. Hey, you know what? It's on. It's on them. If if they want to if they want to jeopardize it, I can't. I you know I I work with people I've known a long time and I trust. We're going to have a crew of six to eight. We're going to travel. We're going to we're going to be a traveling circus. Mm -hmm. So somebody wants to sneak out of the motorhome, I'm going to probably know they're sneaking out of the motorhome. I mean, you know, we got two motorhomes. They each sleep, no, they each sleep ten, but we're going to have a crew of six and four actors. So you know, uh, we'll know. <laughs> that's the only way I do it. Is you got to you got to keep some form of control. You know, that's what's happened. Is football? Why is football getting the COVID problem right now? Because everything was controlled when these guys were at training camp because they were they were kept in a bubble, just like basketball successfully did. And then, as we all said, let's take an office pool. You want to go four weeks or five before the NFL starts shutting down games? Well, people go home, then they start traveling, and then they come back from a game, then they go out with their friends, and then they go to a strip club or they go wherever, and then they go play a game, and then these two teams play, and these guys mingle, and then they take it all with them. And that's what's happening. That's why you're seeing games getting canceled and teams getting shut down. You know, it's happening now. We're only in week three. <laughs> right. And we're not even in the cold season. And isn't that when COVID is most... That's when COVID, I think, is going to be the worst. So, yeah, I mean, we're going to we're gonna take all the precautions necessary. Um, we're, we're just, yeah, that's how we're... That's the only way we can do it. It's the only way we can do it. Do you see yourself flying anytime soon? I love flying. But, I mean... In terms of we have a plane in the movie too. I forget. Oh, oh, There's great. a plane. Oh, okay. Somebody will be flying. We got a little Piper Cub. <laughs> but I mean, in terms of taking a commercial flight, yes, with recycled air. I, I I would not right now want to go on a plane. I would knowing knowing whether or not I've been exposed to COVID is the big mystery in the house. But let's say I have. I wouldn't want to get on a plane now because I think for the first time in our lifetime we're thinking about the air we breathe, mm -hmm. and the close contact we make with people we don't know. And I, because the way we've all had to rethink and relook at tight spaces, oh, the thought of being on a plane with people right now, or ever, <laughs> I don't want to do it. <laughs>